Welcome to the Jesus Revealed podcast series. I'm your host, Zintem Mube, and today we are in day four, specifically then looking at Jesus beginning his ministry. Now, before I introduce my guest today, as well as just delving then into the various aspects of that or those passages of scripture, I'd like to encourage everyone please subscribe to our to our channels. You can find us on Salom Word of Truth, both on the Apple um, podcast channel or the podcast app or on Spotify. Alternatively, you can view us and listen to us in the background on YouTube. That is Salom Word of Truth, Brackpan. Now, my guest today is Pastor Wasim. Was, thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you for, for availing yourself for this. Sure, thank you for having me. Yeah. I got you a little bit earlier and <laughs> saw some of the other guests. Yeah, yeah. So it is a bit of a tough lineup to follow. You'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. I think you'll we'll be good, yeah. So, Pastor Boss, we are looking specifically now at Jesus now has, firstly, he was baptized by John. Yeah. He then was led by the Spirit in, yeah. in, in being tempted and just fasting for those 40 days and, and 40 nights and yeah. him coming out of it victoriously. Now we see him beginning his, his, his ministry. Yeah. And I think before we get into that, I just want us to maybe just look at those, those moments and what exactly Jesus is stepping into in terms of his own person now. Now that he has gone all through these things, he's been confirmed by the Father. He has, I guess victored over over the devil and his temptation what then is is jesus stepping into sure that is a very good question so when i read this portion of scripture yeah. what comes to mind to me is and i think maybe with the, the season of life where i'm in yeah. yeah i read the scripture and i don't just see jesus the son of mary you know or jesus the the son of joseph or Jesus, the brother of his siblings, yeah, and yeah. even the, a friend to some of the friends that he may have had. I see Jesus now stepping into, I'd say, almost the Kairos moment, mm -hmm. where he takes on his full identity as the Christ, yeah. right? And he, he starts actively doing the things that God has called him to do, yeah. which is not just to preach the kingdom, but also to reveal the kingdom. Sure. Now, one thing that I find so significant is there's a portion of scripture in Matthew 4. It's between verses 12 and 17. And he says the, the, the time, some, it, it, it alludes to the time and the kingdom being at hand. Yeah, yeah, now, when yeah. you look at that word time in the Greek, a lot of times in the Bible, it refers to two moments, right? Mm -hmm. The first one being the chronological time. Yeah. So I know I wake up every morning and I decide not to eat breakfast. Mm. So I decide when I'm going to eat, yeah. right? There's a chronological order. Then the second one, when it speaks to time, it refers to a Kairos moment. Mm. So that is a God-appointed moment. So when Jesus comes and he starts his ministry, this is now God's appointed moment. And I think what's so significant about this is us being human beings, we always want to do things at our own time. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we want yeah, certain things yeah. to happen a specific way. We want certain opportunities to, opportunities to come when, when we are ready or when we need a specific thing. And that's not always how God works. Mm -hmm. right? So we see this Kairos moment happening. And I think interestingly enough, there's a few things that take place just before this Kairos moment happens. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe just to... Because I think where you're alluding to, it, I'm also just looking at it from a person then stepping into ministry. Mm -hmm. And we, we at, at, at the Brackpan campus had a very wonderful uh, ordination service yeah, that, yeah. that took place last year. And what you're alluding to is just all those steps that had to take place before the actual ordination of, 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 I guess, everyone then walking yeah. into, into ministry. There were the classes there. Even within the, the actual ordination, there were yeah. so many things and processes that had to happen. So, I mean, Jesus didn't go through all of those things similar to us, <laughs> but there's, there's a sense that there is an order to things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That 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 needs to take place. So I just found that quite quite significant. And now now that he's doing those things, and 
the beginning of the ministry, uh, Pastor Wasim, is happening towards the tail end of John the Baptist's ministry, the person yeah. who prepared the way for him. Mm-hmm. And he's now getting arrested. Mm-hmm. And we know that through scripture as well, this is the same chronological order that leads ultimately to his death by the hand of uh, King Herod. Yeah. So I just want to understand that in terms of why then probably this then would happen um, when Jesus then takes his place at not necessarily at the expense of John, but mm. towards the end then of his ministry. I just want then to, if you could please just maybe tell us some of those things that you, that you picked up from, from that moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. So what I find, or should I say what I love about the scripture or the story of Jesus and John the Baptist, yeah. it's very contradictory. Mm-hmm. When, or let me not say contradictory. There's, very, there's various contrasts over here. Yeah. Yeah. So where one begins, the other one ends. So when we see Jesus, the build-up to this, right? Jesus goes and he gets baptized. Mm-hmm. Right? That for me is the starting point. Because prior to that, I believe he did perform one or two miracles. Yeah. And just zooming in specifically to when they're turning the water to wine. Yeah, yeah. His mother sends the guys to him, but he says to his mother, why is she sending them to him? Because his time has not arrived yet. Mm. So mm. there he was referring to his Kairos time. So now, sure. just chatting to the, the, the order of things, how you beautifully said, right? He now goes, he gets baptized, and he does it to fulfill scripture. Yeah. I mean, this is God. He doesn't have to get baptized. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But he's yeah. also true to his word. So he goes and he gets baptized. And the father then says to him, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Which is also so funny because he doesn't need any affirmation. Yeah. <laughs> but God yeah. affirms yeah. him. Yeah. So we see him now coming out of baptism and showing to us that how important it is to actually live out God's word. Hmm. So it might not have been necessary for Jesus. Yeah but he still did it. And I think a lot of times there's certain portions of scripture, right? In this journey that we walk as life and speaking specifically to being a minister, to being a pastor, that we might find very insignificant. We don't have Mm -hmm. to do certain things, right? But God is pleased when we do do them. And I think that's why Jesus got baptized is to highlight that number one. And it's also to show that he is the son of God. Mm. Because I think when he came out of that pool, there was something very different about him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We could have gotten baptized in that day and age and we would have come out and it would have been, it would have been good. Yeah. But I think when he came out, something very different shifted over there. Yeah. Then we see him going into the desert and he's going to go pray. But then the devil comes to him and he's trying to tempt him. And a lot of times that happens with us. Yeah. Now, I've heard this phrase going around that you shouldn't necessarily want things that you are not prepared for. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you sometimes get those things before the time, before a Kairos moment, mm. it could actually destroy you. Yeah. But we see Jesus now going into the desert. And the beauty of it is he models how we ought to handle temptation. Yeah. So the Bible says to us that when we do get tempted, it's because of our own fleshly desires. Mm-hmm. This wasn't the case with Jesus, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But we do know that when we do get in those moments, he shows us how we ought to apply the word. Yeah. He shows yeah. us how we ought to resist Satan and then he will flee. Mm-hmm. We also mm-hmm. say, see it later in the Garden of Gethsemane when he asks his disciples to pray with him and they fall asleep. And then he says yeah. to them, yeah. if you, you must pray to avoid temptation. Yeah. So he shows us how he skillfully applied the word and how he skillfully applied prayer and the enemy ended up leaving him. So he showed publicly his faith, right? All of us are to show our faith publicly. And once we publicly show our faith, there will be temptations that come. And a lot of times with those temptations, we need to just be grounded on the word and praying. And once that happened with him, then we start seeing how his ministry had begun. Because clearly there were, as much as it's God, if you had to put yourself in this situation, there were things that you have overcome. Mm. There are things that God can actually now trust you with. And that's where he allows you to go out. And I know this is not part of the scripture, but if you read a little bit further down, it shows you how Jesus then starts making disciples. 
So once you go out there and you actually start performing your ministry, or you, you, whether it's you know a preaching ministry, whether it's just being a family man, because that's also a ministry. He, God, he, um, the scripture then shows you how God can use you to actually touch other people as well. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that, Pastor Moss. So let's then zero in on John the Baptist. We know this is the end then of his ministry. But I'd like us to just reflect on him and, and his ministry and some of the lessons then, maybe that you've picked up yeah. just by, by going through that passage, looking at the ministry of, of John the Baptist. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, good question. And I apologize. I don't think I brought the contrast in, in the previous one, but I can bring it in now. Yeah. So we know that Jesus' walk and his ministry, it started off very beautifully. Mm. But the more he started preaching Christ, the more he started doing what he needed to do, he started picking up a lot of opposition. Yeah. And that's the not so nice part about ministry. Mm, 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 <laughs> but mm. as this, this beauty started happening, and I think this, there was this blossoming within, within his ministry, there was this dying now with John the Baptist's ministry. Yeah. So John the Baptist for me very much represents a picture of humility. Yeah. Why I say this is because the Bible describes him as a man that ate locusts mm -hmm. and it also described him, I can't remember what it said about his clothes. Yeah, <laughs> he was... <laughs> Not a pretty picture. It was a, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he lived like this. So you can only imagine the type of scrutiny this guy used to get, mm, you know, from mm, people. Mm. And even with him getting that potential scrutiny, right, I'm assuming he did, he still preached Christ. Yeah. He still prepared the way for Christ. Yeah. And we see when, when he actually saw Jesus for the first time coming towards him, he started saying to guys like, yo, this is the Christ. You know, mm -hmm. this is the man that mm -hmm. I've been talking about. Yeah. So I'd imagine some people even thought that he was crazy. Yeah. So here we have this man who's been humble, who's given his life to God, who's lived in the wilderness, right? This picture of humility. And then as Jesus's ministry starts almost um, elevating, we see his one decreasing. Right, he did. He did allude yeah, to that. He yeah. said, "I must increase. I must decrease, so you can increase." Yeah. Right. Not long after that, we see this guy getting arrested, and it's like, "What?" Jesus just got accepted by the Father. Yeah. He went into the wilderness. He overcame the devil, and here we have John the Baptist now in prison. <laughs> yeah. And John yeah. the Baptist actually starts doubting Jesus because he sends his disciples to him, yeah. and he says. Go ask that man if he is the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So very contradictory, but also beautiful because it also represents man, yeah. right? How I think we think, how we can come to God, how we are humble in order to accept Christ and how we must stay humble in order for him to stay. Mm, but then also mm. having these moments where, but actually is this thing working? Yeah. You know, is yeah. God going to be for my family? Is he going to work things out within my career? So I think it's a very beautiful story. Yeah. No, that's that's really, really good, Pastor Wasim. So let's bring this to a close. And there are various, I guess, passages that we can learn from. And I think there's there's looking at specifically at, at day four and the beginning of his ministry. We've got Matthew 4, 12 to 17, which a good chunk of our learning was, was there, but also looking at Luke 4. 14 to 15 and, and Mark as well, chapter one from uh, four, 15 to, to 16. If we had to learn from those passages and the various things that the listener or, or the viewer can, can glean from there, what would you say would those things be? What would be the things that you want us to, to walk away with? Sure, yeah. that's an awesome question. So. Looking at Jesus and at John the Baptism within the scripture, I think to an extent we can identify with both of them. Mm. The firstly, how we can identify with Jesus is how he fulfilled scripture or how he followed scripture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that is so important. Why this is so significant for me is because during the pregnancy phase, right, mm. we had a baby mm. very recently. Yeah. We almost lost the baby on multiple occasions. Yeah. And the one thing that it taught me is that this baby cannot have faith. She cannot have faith for herself. Mm -hmm. So we need to have faith for her. Yeah. But the only way that we can have faith is if we ground ourselves correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, so reading scripture, praying, um, it's, it's very important. And we see Jesus doing that. And he does it so beautifully. The second thing is Jesus came and he represented God. Mm -hmm. Right? 
in many ways, we are also representing God. So Pastor Adrian asked a very profound and life-changing question end of last year when he was preaching one of his sermons. He said, the question he asked was, how can we show Jesus more and more in our daily living? And when you think about it, you're like, whoa, you know, how can I do that more within my marriage? Mm -hmm. How can I do that more with my family? How can I do that more when I show up at work? Um, How can I do that more when I come to church? You know, so I think it's very much exactly that showing God to people, especially people that don't know the Bible. And I think that's sometimes something that we struggle with because we come to church a lot. We fellowship with like minded people. But when you go out into the world, sometimes you can't say to someone, here's the Bible. All the answers are they follow it. You know, we don't know what background they have. We don't know what challenges they might have had. So it's always good to show him in that manner. And then secondly, with John the Baptist, I think it represents, like I said, humility. Mm -hmm. You know, can we be humble each and every single day? Can we remind ourselves that there's a lot of times when there's lessons that God teaches us that we sometimes forget, you know, and I think in that humility is what are some of the core lessons that he teaches us? What are some of the core things, or should I say, what are some of the core values that he wants us to show up with? Mm each and every single day. So I would say those are the, the key three things that we learned from this story. Amen, Pastor Boss, and, and thank you so much for that, for just laying that out and just walking us through just the various elements that us as, as believers can understand in the beginning, just the beginning yeah. of, of Jesus' yeah. ministry, and then just the, the humility of John the Baptist and looking at how then he finished his race. Sure. Even yeah. in his moments of vulnerability, he yeah. did find encouragement 100%. as well. Yeah, so God bless you, Pastor Ross. And thank you so much to everyone that was listening, that was viewing this. Uh, We we pray that this was meaningful and and this was a blessing to you. So wherever you are, we do encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube and and, and our podcast channels. You can find us on Apple. You can find us on Spotify. It is Silent Word of Truth. And the podcast is Jesus Revealed. God bless you.